Today on Builds, I'm going to show you how we converted my Multi-Air 1.4 to be a T-Jet. What's going on folks, Eddie here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. So today we're back working on the 124. Like I mentioned in the last video, what we're doing is we're removing the multi-air from this engine. What that means is we're gonna be removing the upper half of the cylinder head and replacing it with a dual overhead cam unit. These engines from the factory were originally designed as a dual overhead cam engine. A multi-air engine is just an evolution of the T-Jet engine. Now, Saying evolution would imply that it's by far a more evolved engine, and yeah, the technology in a multi-air engine is more advanced. But advanced doesn't always mean better. We're giving up a little bit of low-end torque by switching to multi-air, but low-end torque doesn't win races, top-end power wins races. You're no longer dealing with a lot of the issues with multi-air in regards to how multi-air behaves on an operating Fiat engine. There's a lot of things that multi-air does during part throttle and idling that leads to a pretty lumpy feeling engine. If you have one of these engines, I'm sure you realize that they're not always the smoothest things. So doing this will return a lot of the low end drivability of the car. At the same time, it'll allow us to rev potentially higher into the rev range and make top end power a lot easier. For those of you just joining us for the first time, this engine is fully built. It has CP pistons, Carrillo rods, ported and polished cylinder head, and now we're replacing the aforementioned Multi-Air with a dual overhead cam section. Anyhow, uh, let's just get into this. It's been a while since I pulled this thing apart. Oh, really? Yeah, it's been a few weeks. All right, so. <laughs> What's that? Just putting some grease on the cam lobes. So when we put the lifters in, the initial hit is lubricated. Okay. The same part number, the same height. I'd have to assume that they're all the same. Ah, uh, yeah, they probably are. sure that the heads and everything are the same, right? Yep. 100%? Yep. Kind of said, these things sit way the hell down in there. Wow, this is going to be the first T-Jet swapped 124. Oh yeah, for sure. This is the first. No one's done this before. Hmm. Okay. The T-Jet engines are typically controlled by a Bosch ECU, whereas the multi airs are controlled by a Magneti Morelli ECU. You know, probably two engineers got an over, over an argument about whose idea was better. And the guy's the bigger edic one in his emails and that's why we have a Bosch and Magnetic Morelli ECU. I'm sure that the single ECU would have worked on both of them, just the engineers come to agree. Which I'm starting to find out is more and more common with uh, engineers in cross brands and whatnot. Well yeah, you know in the aftermarket a lot of tuners don't really like each other. 
Why would they like each other in the uh, OEM, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Why would we get along? Arr. Tuners don't get along. The odd engineers have no souls. That's not true. Talk to a couple. They're pretty nice guys. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Actually. You know, what I'm starting to find out is the engineers aren't all the devil that they used to be. I still think that they should put their... Anything they design, they should put on a fucking car. Because that would stop a lot of re-engineering having to get done. Yeah, but there's also certain budgetary constraints and whatnot. I'm sure that's... Oh, it always comes down to budget. You yeah. know the last two things in a car that are ever, that are ever designed? What's that? The tires and exhaust. You ever wonder why some cars get the shittiest tire, tires in the world? Why is that? Yeah, they went over budget. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh, this is coming off like a rotten bag of dick. What is a rotten bag of dick like? Uh, like a used bag of cat litter. You figure that one out. Oh, golly. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you they do that in case you have to pull the back off. When you get the gears on the back screwed up, I bet you you have to go through and realign them. Because I bet you you can take the key gears off the back. Probably. And if you take the gears off the back, how are you going to get the two cams lined up? You only have a single cam gear up front. I bet uh, you these don't have a pin or a dot or something like that to line them up. Yeah, that makes sense. So you have to put those in to get those aligned. Yeah. But if you have one already done... Let's see if it drops on with that in place, or if that's going to No, away. it's not going to drop in with that in place. Okay, so that one has to come off. Yeah. But they that's okay. Both have to come off, actually. But I am I did it to get it in roughly into the place where I needed it. It's sitting, it's sitting on the lifters. That's what's that's what the problem is. Oh. Okay, so we have to make sure that we're somewhat correct and then go through and tighten this thing down yeah, with the bolt. I didn't bother to check. These are all the same length, right? As far as I know. <sighs> yeah, same front door. Okay. There's a sealer all over it. Oh, that's baffled too. Beautiful. Okay. All right. How do you plug the other one? Uh. Not gonna work. No? Uh uh. Okay. What's the issue? Uh here's the threads are different. It's like this bolt was never designed to come out. Or something. I don't know. Well, considering that this one was off in a bar and wouldn't have had anything there, it probably never has been out. That's just the consideration, right? I can 
cut the catch can down and put different fittings on them. Yeah. One, I don't have a fitting to go in that fucking hole, so yeah. I'm gonna have to take this, cut this down. Tap it out, put something through. Tap it out, put something into it. I don't have anything on a fucking 90 that'll work. Mm. by this thing's gonna have. The last thing I wanna do is start blowing dipstick tubes out. Uh -huh. Hopefully we'll clear the cow. sit out there loading tunes perpetually over and over and over again. Hopefully we catch something and the car will start. Well, and that's the magic of John Bushbaum. And the funny thing is it sounds pretty good. So here's the car running. I just can't believe it's running. Okay, so we're going to leave it here for now. Next Friday, there's a video. Johnny and I need to tune this. Next video, we start tuning this thing. John Bushbaum's a f***ing genius. I give you a T-Jet running on a multi-air. All right, I'll see you guys in a week.